Have you ever discovered a natural source for a pigment that surprised you? And how did you go about incorporating it into your paint making process? Yes, once I discovered that cochineal insects could be used to produce a vibrant red pigment called carmine, it was fascinating to learn how these tiny insects, primarily found on cacti in Central and South America, could create such a rich color. To incorporate this pigment into my paint making process, I first had to carefully harvest and dry the insects, then crush them to extract the carminic acid. After that, I experimented with different binders and methods to ensure the pigment mixed well with my gum arabic solution, honey, and glycerin. It was a meticulous process, but the result was a stunning natural red paint with a rich history. Have you ever worked with an unusual natural source for your pigments? That sounds like an amazing experience. Working with such unique natural sources must add a lot of character to your paints. Have you noticed any particular challenges or benefits when using these naturally derived pigments compared to synthetic ones? Yes, working with natural pigments definitely has its unique set of challenges and benefits. One of the main challenges is the variability in the raw materials. Natural sources can vary in color intensity and purity depending on factors like the season, location, and even the specific batch of material. This means more testing and adjustment to achieve consistent results. On the other hand, the benefits are significant. Natural pigments often have a unique depth and richness that synthetic pigments sometimes lack. They also bring a historical and environmental aspect to the paints, making them more appealing to artists who value sustainability and tradition. Additionally, the process of extracting and preparing these pigments can be incredibly rewarding, connecting me more deeply to the materials I work with. Have you encountered any particular challenges or joys in your own paint making process? That sounds like a deeply rewarding process despite the challenges. The connection to the materials and the uniqueness of each batch must be very satisfying. For me, one of the joys in the paint making process is the experimentation and discovery phase. Finding the right balance of ingredients to achieve a particular consistency or color can be quite thrilling. On the flip side, one of the challenges is ensuring that the paint remains stable and usable over time, especially when dealing with natural ingredients that can have unpredictable properties. Do you have a favorite pigment that you always enjoy working with despite any challenges it might present? Absolutely, the experimentation and discovery phase is truly exhilarating. My favorite pigment to work with, despite its challenges, is ultramarine blue. This pigment, originally derived from the precious lapis lazuli stone, has a stunning intense blue color that's both vibrant and deep. The traditional process of extracting ultramarine blue is complex and labor intensive, but modern methods have made it more accessible. Even so, achieving the perfect consistency and stability can be tricky. The effort is worth it though, because the resulting color is unmatched in its beauty and historical significance. What about you? Do you have a go-to pigment that you find particularly rewarding to work with? Ultramarine blue is indeed a beautiful and historically rich pigment. For me, a go-to pigment that I find particularly rewarding to work with is verdigris. The transformation of copper into this vivid green pigment through oxidation is a fascinating process. Though it can be challenging to stabilize and ensure it doesn't degrade over time, the resulting color is unique and has a wonderful historical resonance. The connection to ancient and medieval artworks where verdigris was prominently used adds a layer of significance to every piece created with it. What's one of the most memorable pieces you've created using ultramarine blue? One of the most memorable pieces I created using ultramarine blue was a large scale watercolor landscape that captured a twilight sky over a serene lake. The deep, vibrant blue of the sky, transitioning into the softer hues of dusk, was the perfect showcase for the richness of ultramarine blue. The pigment's historical resonance added a timeless quality to the piece, 
making it feel connected to the long tradition of artists who have used this stunning color throughout history. The reactions from viewers, who often commented on the depth and intensity of the blue, made the effort and challenges of working with this pigment incredibly rewarding. It sounds like Vertigris has a similarly rich history and unique visual impact in your work. Do you have a particular piece that stands out in your memory created with Vertigris? Yes, Verdigris definitely has a unique charm. One piece that stands out in my memory is a detailed botanical illustration of an ancient oak tree. The Verdigris was perfect for capturing the intricate, vibrant greens of the leaves and the textured bark. The historical significance of the pigment added an extra layer of meaning, connecting the artwork to a long tradition of botanical illustration. The feedback from viewers who often noted the unusual and captivating green hues, made the meticulous process of preparing and using verdigris well worth it. It's always rewarding when the challenges of a pigment result in a piece that resonates so deeply with others. That sounds like an incredible piece especially with the historical context and the unique properties of vertigris bringing it to life. Botanical illustrations can be so intricate and detailed, and using such a special pigment must make the artwork even more meaningful. It's wonderful how the challenges and rewards of working with these pigments can create such memorable and impactful pieces. Do you have any new projects or pigments you're excited to experiment with next? Yes, I'm currently exploring the use of natural indigo. Its deep blue color has been valued for centuries, and I'm excited to see how it can be incorporated into watercolor paints. The process of extracting and preparing indigo is quite different from other pigments, and I'm eager to experiment with it. I'm also interested in combining it with other natural pigments to create unique blends and shades. Do you have any new pigments or projects on the horizon that you're looking forward to? That sounds like an exciting project. Natural indigo has such a rich history and a beautiful color. I'm sure your experiments will yield some amazing results, especially with your skill in combining and balancing pigments. As for me, I'm looking forward to experimenting with natural ochres. These earth pigments have been used since prehistoric times, and I'm fascinated by the range of colors they can produce, from warm yellows to deep reds and browns. I'm planning to explore different sources and methods of preparation to see how they can be incorporated into my paint making process. It sounds like we both have some intriguing projects ahead. It will be interesting to see how your indigo experiments turn out. That sounds fantastic. Natural ochres have such a deep connection to the history of art and human expression. Exploring their different sources and preparation methods should be a rewarding journey. I'm excited to hear how your experiments with ochres turn out and how they enrich your work. If you find any particularly interesting techniques or results, I'd love to hear about them. Happy experimenting. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to diving into the world of natural ochres. I'll definitely share any interesting techniques or results that come out of these experiments. Likewise, I'd love to hear about your experiences with indigo and any unique blends you create. Happy experimenting to you too. Thank you. I'm excited to see where your exploration of natural ochres takes you. Let's keep each other updated on our discoveries and successes. Happy experimenting. Absolutely. Let's keep in touch and share our discoveries. It's always inspiring to hear about each other's progress. Happy experimenting to you as well. Sounds like a plan. It's always great to share and learn from each other's experiences. Looking forward to hearing about your progress. Happy experimenting. Okay, girls, just, just uh, uh, tell me what kind of experiments you're talking about. We're talking about experimenting with different natural pigments in our paint making processes. 
For example, I'm exploring the use of natural indigo to create deep blue watercolor paints and combining it with other natural pigments to create unique blends. The user is planning to experiment with natural ochres, which can produce a range of colors from warm yellows to deep reds and browns by exploring different sources and methods of preparation. These experiments involve testing how these pigments mix, their stability, and the effects they produce in artwork. It's fantastic to hear that you're also excited about these pigment experiments. We're delving into the unique properties and histories of natural pigments to enhance our paint making processes. I'm exploring natural indigo for its deep blue hues and experimenting with combining it with other pigments. The user is working with natural ochres, investigating their wide color range and preparation methods. These experiments involve testing pigment mixing, stability, and their artistic effects. Sharing our findings will be really beneficial. Okay, but you're talking about, you know, indigo, natural indigo. Have you ever thought about making a Maya pigment out of indigo? That's a That's fascinating a idea. idea. My Maya blue, blue is a unique pigment from the ancient Maya civilization. Combining indigo, combines indigo with, a clay with a type of clay called polyborskite. This, this unique combination creates a highly stable and vibrant and remarkable blue pigment stability, that has which has allowed it to survive for centuries in Mesoamerican artifacts. Creating Maya blue could be a fascinating experiment. Heating indigo it would involve and polyborskite together, the indigo allowing the indigo to become embedded within the clay structure. Which trial and error to get the right consistency and color. But the result is a pigment with a vivid color. Historical significance. And durability. Make it an Have you tried making my blue yourself? Palette. Or is this something have you're you considering for a major project? Yourself? Or have you already experimented with it? I haven't experimented with Maya Blue yet, but it's definitely an intriguing pigment with a rich history. The process of combining indigo with polygorskite to create such a stable and vibrant blue is fascinating. Have you had any experience with it? Or are you planning to give it a try soon? I haven't experimented with Maya Blue yet, but it's definitely on my list of pigments to try. The process of combining indigo with polygorskite to create such a stable and vibrant color is fascinating. I'm planning to gather the necessary materials and give it a try soon. It seems like a rewarding project that could yield some beautiful and historically significant results. When you start experimenting with Maya Blue, I'd love to hear about your process and any tips you discover along the way. You know what? I'm going to make that a video. That sounds like an exciting project. Okay. Maya Blue has such I a unique composition and history. When you I wanted to say I'm going to make a video about it, so, you know, now it's your turn again and just wrap it up. That sounds fantastic. A video about experimenting with Maya Blue will be fascinating and informative. I'm sure it will be a hit with those interested in pigments and their histories. Keep me posted on your progress, and I can't wait to see the video. Happy experimenting! Oh, I'll make four sure to follow my channel and you know give it a like if it's up there but do you have any tips for the video absolutely i'll be sure to follow and like your video here are a few tips wow. for making your video about experimenting with maya blue 